watch. Those of you who are watching, uh, basically what I'm doing is just kind of reviewing some of the VODs that Vince and I did over at Rotterdam. Uh, I guess it's kind of important to note that uh, kind of what I'm looking for in this demo review is Vince and I, I feel, approach commentary where, you know, he's definitely the play-by-play -play commentator. So he's the one kind of building the narrative, creating hype, casting the big clutch moments, casting really the end round moments, uh, like all the big fragging uh, series. Uh, that's kind of his main focus. So then my main focus is to use like freeze time to recap what you've seen, what to expect next, uh, use slower portions in the mid-round section to generate some discussion about tactical insight or what I'm seeing so far within the round, how the round's building up or where things are headed, what adjustments I'm seeing. I'm also using it, again, to set up what you might see. Like, you know, I do a lot of demo watching, so I'm trying to figure out uh, how I can inject that insight into the broadcast where I can kind of let you folks know what positions people like to play or what strats a team likes to run or just generally speaking give you that strategical information occasionally I'll bring in like supplemental statistical information as it makes sense you know if I know a certain player is doing a certain thing or performs a certain way I might try to bring some stats in or like maybe if we're on a certain map at the very beginning you might see me try to bring in some stats about a team's results or a pick ban or something like that just try to add that supplement information to kind of make the story uh, that much uh, more full I guess to the viewer like they get a little bit more like insight and you know kind of like supporting cast type material and then they get the actual you know main thing which is the match itself right uh and so that's kind of something that me and vince have been doing for a while you know he's very clearly play by play i'm very clearly color every now and then i'll fuck up a timing and i want to doing some play by play just because i get thrown in like an awkward situation maybe he's been talking for a really long time and he wants to pass it to me to kind of break things up uh, to keep it more of a conversation than kind of a monologue and so i'm like get thrown some play by play moments there sometimes i take play by play moments just to wake myself up like if i feel like i'm kind of slipping or um maybe um just you know like a little bit mentally out of it uh i feel like doing like one round of play by play kind of like jolts me back up almost like an energy shot like instead of drinking coffee or energy drink or something like that i feel like it almost kind of just you know it's that little kick in the ass to kind of get me back focused on the game and stuff like that um so that just kind of give you a general idea of like our philosophy on casting um a couple of things that i feel that we've run into that were problem areas where one, sometimes I would focus too much on trying to bring in supplemental information from demo watching or stats, and I would kind of miss important things in the game itself, or it would cause me to fuck up my timing on passing back and forth with Vince because I'm like staring at my notes or something on a second screen, and it could cause some problems. So that's something I tried to do less uh, at Rotterdam, uh, something that I had had troubles with in the past, like earlier this year and other times we've casted together. That's one thing that I tried to focus on to kind of fix myself a bit. Uh, and I think collectively, something that Vince and I tried to do this event was try to um, like loosen up a bit and just have a bit more fun. I felt like sometimes we were like really focused on the technical side of casting with the play by play and color back and forth. And sometimes we just didn't generate enough discussion. There wasn't enough banter. And we have to understand that we're not just commentators trying to explain to you the game uh, from a strategical standpoint or from like a play by play hype standpoint. But it's also about being entertainers and, you know, having some banter, having some back and forth, having some conversation, not being afraid to crack a joke here and there. You know, if we're having fun as commentators bringing you the game, then that means that hopefully you will also have fun uh, watching us cover the game, right? I mean, that's just kind of like a pattern that you kind of want to create um maybe not maybe sometimes you'll get cringed out by shit that we say and while we're laughing and having a good time maybe you find our joke like lame or our discussion not entertaining to you and doesn't bring value not everything's going to hit some things are going to be a miss but you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take and you do have to sometimes kind of just you know not lose sight of why we're doing this commentary in the first place you know the whole reason why i got into casting and why many other casters get into casting is because we enjoy it right it's a lot of fun um, and so you, you have to sometimes not get so consumed by the game that you're watching that you kind of lose sight as to why you're doing it in the first place, which is to have a good time. And, and again, I think that there's a lot to be said about if you and your co-commentator are having a good time, then hopefully the viewers are going to have a good time too. So just want to throw that in there. So again, the main reason why I'm kind of bringing this up at the beginning is to kind of talk to you about what our philosophy on casting is and what we were trying to work on specifically at this event. And specifically, I was trying to work on not getting lost in my notes too much, not getting lost in the supplemental information too much and losing sight of the game itself 
I was trying to focus on timings as well with Vince, like making sure that, you know, we're passing back and forth really well, that no one's really dominating the cast and that we're having some conversation and, and, and just the, the flow of the cast is good and the chemistry is better because that's just something that you get with reps. The more you cast together, the more comfortable you get with each other, the more understanding you'll have on timings and when the pass back and forth and, you know, what your kind of co-caster needs, uh, you know, what like works the best as far as the combination of how you're going to talk together about the game. So those are just going to come in general. Um, but I think we we're really focused on loosening up, having more fun, having more banter, passing back and forth better. We tried this at Malmo a bit as well, like on the V stream, but I felt like I went too far with it and almost got caught doing like play by play more often than I should have been. Uh, and it kind of fucked up like everything in our formula. Uh, and the thing is, you don't want the formula to be like so finite that you can't like kind of, you know, loosen up and have fun with it. Uh, you don't want it to turn into the situation where you become like super robotic. Um, but there is something to be said about having like some type of foundation to work from. That way, in case things get a little bit chaotic and crazy, you can kind of get back into the the, the spin of it, right? You can kind of get back into, okay, I know what my role is, uh, you know what your role is, and it lets us to kind of come back together uh, if things get a little bit crazy. Um, so anyway, I want to kick off this video and kick off the stream, I guess, because I'm probably going to put this on YouTube. Uh, just kind of let you know what our philosophy is and then what we were trying to work on this event, right? So the first game we're going to do, uh, I already did one VOD review privately because uh, I didn't think I was going to do any content about it, but I figured, what the hell, it might be kind of neat. People might like it. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at, this is the final map that we casted for the entire tournament. It was map three of the second semifinal between Crazy and Avangar. So we're going to do that one first because I already did the second map of the series. We didn't cast the first map together because uh, I actually thought I was having a heart attack. This is like no shit. Um, so after the end of the first best of three, the first semifinal, which was f Force versus Heroic, which I might do a video on that as well, um, I had to stop and like actually go seek medical attention to make sure I was okay. And then I came back and did uh, maps two and three of Avangard versus Crazy to end off the day for us and then before the grand final. So I already looked at map two by myself um, and you know already kind of got my notes from it and stuff like that. And so now we're going to be looking at map three together, which is the last map we did. And then I might backtrack and look a little bit at the first semifinal, either privately or I might do another video. I'm not really sure. Depends on if you folks like this kind of stuff or not. Uh, I'll put this video up and see what people think. And if people are interested, maybe I'll do this here and there. I don't want to make it like a regular thing because some of this is kind of just for me and Vince and it's kind of private, but maybe I'll peel back the curtains a bit, give you some behind the scenes, see what you think. Um, I'll interact with chat a bit as well, um, if there is any, but right now there hasn't been. But again, I think a lot of this is going to be more of like a YouTube vibe. I thought I'd live stream it as well. So here we go. Let's get started. So context sake, um, Alvingar won the first map. Or no, I think Crazy won the first map on Mirage in a really close game. Second game was Dust 2. Uh, Avangar won it really close. They were all behind most of the game. They kind of make a comeback. And then now we're on map three, which I believe is Inferno. So let's get it going. A match we have been blessed to witness here, and we're going for another. It's Inferno. It's all on the line, and the winner of this face is Heroic in the finals. It's been a, it's been a true one at the castle. Oh, I absolutely have, bro. I am ready to go. It has been such an intense day here in the semifinals, and we're not even at the finals yet, bro. Like, I feel like we've been delivered the quality already, though, at this point here early on in the playoffs, and now we're going into Inferno. Now, this is a map that Avangar usually quite strong on. They're going to feel pretty at home here for Crate. Um, I think I had it, yeah. Let's go to, let's do normal playback speed. It's probably going to sound really weird to people on YouTube if I don't. I listen to stuff usually at faster speed just because I just like to get through the VOD faster. But in this case, since I'm doing a YouTube thing, we'll just uh, play it at normal speed. When they came into this tournament, forget the roster change. They had lost their last nine games in a row on Inferno. They were getting so this is that supplemental information I like to bring in. So I'm talking about some map results. Together and they've won it twice so far this tournament against Asturian and against Habu. Now there's a big difference between those two teams, though, and what you're going to be seeing right now against Avangar. Avangar is a team that has been really building themselves up in the tier two scene for quite some time. We've seen them finally pop off at a tier one level at the major, and this is a much bigger test for Crazy, especially a brand new lineup basically coming into this. So again, that's just a supplemental information I like to bring, 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 uh, and especially good in these moments because I kind of know what DreamHack opened that when it passes from the desk to us, that um, I have this like little bit of time before we actually jump into the map and I want to fill it with something. So I'm trying to set up what the game's going to be. And that is, of course, some supplemental information about each team's results on the map we're going to do, which is Inferno. Maybe talk about some player positioning and stuff like that. I don't know. I just try to you know, make this time useful, like almost like 
because I'm coming from an analyst desk background, I almost make it kind of a mini analyst segment to supplement what you're from the desk. Because what I try to do is I listen to the desk segment um, on, on my ears before it passes to us, and then I try to bring in like information that will either supplement what the desk did say already, or I'm trying to um, maybe add some other stuff that they didn't get to mention because maybe they didn't have time, or maybe there was other more important things that they were trying to focus on. But I still think it's good information for the viewer to have before we get into the game. So that, that's kind of what this whole part is, right? Well, Netherlands, you've been one hell of a crowd, and we're going to have at least one more map for you in this semi-finals for we, myself and Dust. Then we've got the finals afterwards. Indeed, that's what Scrawny and Lana are doing to grace themselves, which you, or something like that. I don't know where I was going with that. Well, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was me trying to like throw a compliment to Lawners and Scrawny who were going to be doing the grand finals after us, and I just... You know, sometimes you just do some fucking word salad and it uh, doesn't toss in the bowl the correct way you want it to. And uh, that's that's what happened there. We're do some fantastic it happens. Also, we got a great panel as well for you. So everything is ready to go. All that's left to wait for is the start of this map, which is coming up right now, Vince. We're on Inferno. It's Avagar. It's crazy. It's for a spot in the Grand Finals. A classic map three in front of us. You couldn't ask for a better one than Inferno. A Vanguard starting on the T side. Gonna have a lot of utility at their disposal. Two mollies, three smokes. Enough to actually maybe sell a fake, if they so chose, or completely blot out the B-side. They are playing this one slowly, maybe anticipating a crazy push down middle. But look at this stack in middle, actually. Crazy got four players here. A quadruple crossfire has been established. This does leave ships all alone. He's Billy No Mates on B. He's about to have some enemies tapping on his door momentarily smoked out on coffins more grenades gonna follow it up there's not too much he can do but he still connects the headshot through the smoke even while flashbang and he's trying to buy time for the rest of his team to get in this is where emmy's utility could be massive indeed he has a smoke a flash and a grenade it could block off one angle allow them to pop flash their way in and the nade damage has done its job it has chucked down some of these players it gives them a way back in but buster he's gonna try his damage to stop it from happening Glock on the approach has been swiped away, looking to erode the T's who planted their flag. On See, I don't know if I should have even said anything there. Like, I felt like Vince had been going for a pretty long time because the pissed around started off pretty fast and he had been going for a while. And sometimes you just kind of want to break it up. You want to give him a chance to kind of rest his voice up a bit for maybe like a deeper play that's going to happen. Um, but also, I can kind of disrupt his flow. Like if he's trying to start at like a basement level to build the narrative of the round, and then he's going to kind of slowly build his voice up as things like get more and more exciting. I don't want to ruin that momentum at the same time. So for me, it's hard to know if I should have just not said anything at all there or if what I did was fine. Like I made a like quick little comment about what utility was there, um, about how they might be able to approach the retake. And um, I got it back to him like before the main retake had actually started. So I didn't like really interrupt the main action of the round. So let's just kind of rewind it back a little bit and like do this again. This does leave ships all alone. See, I'm not saying anything through this mid round portion because I can see that there's like four people at B. There's four people on the opposite side for the CT side. So I know that they're going to hit B any minute and I don't want to get caught, you know, doing anything whenever they actually go for the hit itself because then i'll be kind of fucking up like play-by-play -play moments perhaps when kills might start breaking out like if the one guy that is b takes a peek from coffins and catches a couple of headshots i don't want to like take that away from vent so i'm just not saying anything through pretty much the entirety of this round um and so yeah um but then i kind of come in because i feel like he's been going for a while and i want to you know break it up a little bit blot out the B side. so here here they go crossfire has been established is Billy no mates on B. He's about to have some enemies tapping on his door momentarily. Smoked out on coffins. More grenades gonna follow it up. There's not too much he can do, but he still connects the headshot through the smoke. Even while flashbang. And he's trying to buy time for the rest of his team to get in. This is where Emmy's utility could be massive. And he didn't even pause. I think he was kind of letting me in there. I can't read his mind, but the way he paused and the way he said that comment made me think he wanted me to emphasize the utility aspect and like add some tactical kind of coverage to maybe the philosophy of what to do. I don't know. So let's see. He has a 
smoke, a flash, and a grenade. It could block off one angle, allow them to pop flash their way in, and then the A damage has done its job. It has chucked down some of these players. It gives them a way back in, but Buster, he's gonna try his damage to stop it from happening. Glock on the approach has been swiped away, looking to erode the T's, who've planted their flag on B and made it their home. Crazy looking to evict them. Flashbang is perfect. Jane couldn't see anything. Kick out of the back of the site with the Glock is looking to rip through some heads. And now it all falls to Adren. He's been smoked off. This is where the lack of a kit's really going to start to hurt Crazy. Needs to be a full 10 second defuse. And Esperanto playing bodyguard has been successful. So well done. He had to stick it. He couldn't help Esperanto. He had to put all his faith in his teammate. And Esperanto did deliver off the back of it that will be one round now going the way of crazy also gives some credit the ship's playing really smart buying time getting a frag helping set up the retake he's taking over nexus position on the b bomb site as kind of the anchor of that site and he definitely did his job there and now he'll be able to get an mp9 and a nade set rest of the team buying around it as well even though there was a bomb plant vince oh never mind they actually did get sg so well you know kind of just typical isn't it so a couple different things with that um now, the more that I think about it, that little quick comment I made about the utility on the retake actually was totally fine because I got it back to him fast enough for him to, like, pick it back up and not, like, put him in an awkward spot where, like, frags are already popping off in a chaotic fashion so he doesn't really have a chance to, like, kind of catch it at the right time and, like, be able to build. So I, I feel like that exchange actually went really well. Um, and I think that I was able to recap and freeze time pretty effectively. And, again, I've kind of set up the picture and now I'm going to pass it to Vince in case there is an early exchange here at Banana. Because that's kind of like the foundation that we build from, that we think about. Like, again, you don't want to be too robotic. But generally, I try to obviously use free times to recap things that were important from the round we just watched. And maybe set up what you might expect next. Like what adjustments could happen. Or, you know, just kind of set expectations. Um, and maybe add some supplemental information. So, like, right here I was able to kind of let you folks know if you didn't already know that ships was kind of taking over nexus anchor position over at the b bomb site um and that's an important role but he's been taking over some other spots throughout the tournament and he's done well with it so i'm kind of you know setting you up to, to know oh that's the adjustment that this team has made because of this roster change now i know like it's just additional tactical information that kind of lets you be more educated on how this team plays and what tweaks they've made with this roster change and i always try to bring that in as i can i felt like that was a good comment to make to kind of you know you know what chips is up to over there um, and then, but again, the foundation that we work from is like, I use that freeze time to do that. I make sure I pass it to Vince pretty early in the round after freeze time to make sure that if anything fast happens, like a quick execute or a quick B control, especially on Inferno where like B control can happen really quickly, especially like the chaos of utility usage and whatnot. I want to get it to him that way he can kind of cover all that. Um, and then if it slows down after that point, I could pick up the mid round. Uh, so that's kind of how it goes. It's like me freeze time events early round. Uh, the mid round is kind of a gray area where both of us will conversate, pass back and forth, just depending on the situation. They want to make sure it gets the vents for the end round or the climax, crescendo, whatever you want to call it, where that final execute's coming in or that final retake's coming in, and he's covering those those clutch type moments are like the really bulk of the round when it comes to the fragging side of things. Um, and so, all in all, I think that that pissed around actually probably went well, and so far this round's going good. So that's how I feel about it. This does mean that it's Sanji that's going to be basically struggling the next round. Yeah, he definitely made the great sacrifice. So the way why we pass here is because we pretty much saw that they were holding out on T stairs. They didn't actually do anything. So now we know that there's just like this moment that we can conversate kind of back and forth a bit. It's still early, so there's not much to recap or talk about. But you know, we're confident that we can slow it down now and have a conversation. I feel like not only am I reviewing this, but I'm also kind of maybe giving you folks insight on how we think about casting, or at least Vince and I. Like, every casting pair is going to be different and what style they bring to the table. But this is kind of us and what we're thinking. Yeah. Definitely made the great sacrifice so that kicker could get armor and an 8 set. That's, of course, assuming that they don't win this round, does. If they do, you can pick up the spoils of war, one of these rifles from Crazy's corpse. Surely. Just obviously makes things a little bit tougher. You see a Drin and Sanji taking over apartments control. Pretty normal for them. So in case you're wondering why there's an awkward silence here in casting, typically if we hear the crowd is doing something, like a chant or whatever, we do that on purpose so that you guys get that kind of environmental feel. Environmental feel? A feel for the en environment? Is that That's probably a better way to put it. Uh, it's just letting you guys get a little bit of that 
feeling of the event, right? So we, well, sometimes we will take pauses that maybe to the viewer doesn't immediately make sense, but it's because we want you guys to get some crowd interaction, so to speak, right? Um, yeah. And then he referenced it. So hopefully pe viewers at home understand why we took a pause there. Uh, especially if nothing's really happening anyway. There's no harm in taking it. Seconds left too. Once that smoke clears, there's not gonna yep. be much time left. For the target to build much of a defense here, Vince. Like, how are you gonna possibly break through this? Well, they're gonna try <laughs> just by running straight at them, but they still stalling, still waiting for that smoke to deplete, maybe baiting the fake. But now they have to go in, they have to press the button, they have to engage. Ships is doing a solid job of holding them at bay with his MP9, allowing Emmy to come in now with his SMG and Jane, who is watching the back. He's now the only player left alive, but not for much longer. At least he died before time, so their economy isn't affected. Good defense there from Crazy. Again, Ship's doing a great job just buying time, allowing a distraction to take place where his teammates can kind of start funneling in and be that assistance they need to close out the round. 2-0 now for Crazy. Buy doesn't really pan out there, obviously, for Avangar, but they're still able to construct something here in this round. It's just, again, Sanji, the sacrifice for the previous round leaves him with just the 250, but everyone else is rifled up. A little bit limited on utility, though, to be fair. Makes it a little bit harder to have that utility exchange war at Banana and still have stuff left over for an execute. Kind of drug on a bit too long there, but nothing's really happening, so I knew that I wasn't going to ruin something. $300 well spent by Crazy. Still have four nades to back it up. Here's what I want to see, man. Like, you know Buster and Kicker are that hit squad on the B control, and I want to see that battle versus ships, the B anchor. I feel like that is going to be the very key head-to-head -head matchup of this half that will determine just how many rounds Avangar are able to get. Can they put a stop to Kicker and Buster? Remember, these are two of the best performers of this tournament so far, particularly Kicker is very near the top. There you go. That's just me again trying to let you folks know what position people typically play, what matchups to look out for, uh, bring you some supplement information about how Kicker and Buster are some of the highly rated tournament, excuse me, highly rated players in the tournament thus far. That's all just, you know, what I try to do, uh, especially when the half hasn't really gotten going yet. So there's not too much to talk about strategically about what's happened so far in the game. Um, that, uh, that's when I try to bring those notes in and try to add a little bit of flavor uh, to the cast. And I pass it back to Vince well before anybody actually takes a peek here at banana so making sure i'm not ruining the play-by-play -play sequence um, he finds the information he's looking for can cause the rest of his team to kick it he highlighted him and for good reason there's two there for him he and that's kind of nice for vince while he's in this play-by-play -play sequence to kind of make reference to the comment that i made that's all about just bridging like creating those bridges between each other so that it's not just two people casting the game next to each other and, and doing their own fucking thing and then just kind of passing back and forth when it's time, but actually like linking our thoughts together and, and making it more of a conversation, right? That's something that we were trying to focus on because it felt like sometimes it got a bit robotic. I would do my spiel, he would do his spiel, and we weren't really connected. Uh, like, we, we, it, I don't know, it was weird. Uh, it was like it was like two casters working separately from each other and not like together as a true team. Um, so, yeah, this this is good. He's done his damage, but so has Otto. Spammed up through the smoke. Avangar will make the most and pounce onto the site for the plant. Right on their assumption that no more CTs would be over here on B. And let in Esperanto, gonna have to clutch a 2v3. They do have kits and nades. More than enough to play with. Gonna bank it off the wall. That smoke though will stop them from spotting whether Jane crosses or not. Well timed smoke deployed by Avangar. Looking for the boost. Jane's position's already there. Double nades. Also stacked to the back of the site, and because Crazy didn't get any kills off the utility, they're going to pull the plug. Just want to play for the long term. This is something I need to fucking fix, and I don't know how. It's like for some reason I have to use some type of filler word every time Vince passes it back to me. Surely, yeah, exactly. Some, some word that agrees with what Vince said, and then builds off of it and kind of goes into my own thing. 
but I feel I could just cut that out and just get into my thought and like skip a word. It's almost like a verbal filler, but not quite because I'm not using it over and over again. Sometimes I will use like, yeah, or indeed, or exactly. I try to vary up the word, but I could probably find a better way to like connect back than just saying some type of agreeable word. I don't know. Something to think about for the future, for me, at least. Didn't get any kills off the utility, they're gonna pull the plug. Yeah, it's one to play for the long term here. The economy is quite low on players like Indian ships. And Esperano, looking to see if he can't find an exit or something like that. Try to force some rebuying out of Avangard. Try to keep the economy as tight as he can. And indeed, he does find Sanji. That was the low money player anyway. That makes it even worse on him. But it is around finally from Avangard. Again, it's Kicker. That is the guy you've got to watch out for on that B side. He is so good at entering that area. Him and Buster, the tag team. Fantastic stuff. Some more weapons on the horizon, though. Both teams coming through strong. Lack of utility for Otto. To be supplemented by the rest of his teammates. Smoke down into mid Adren. He's having none of it. He's going to push through. And this is exactly the reason why I try to get out of early round as quickly as possible as a color commentator, because this can happen. Like, this is so fast. If I was still recapping from what I was saying in freeze time or trying to set up this round, you know, I would be putting Vince in an awkward spot. He needs he needs time to build. He can't just go from zero to 100. Um, so this is good pacing, I think. So I'm already out, like, as the round starts. And, and it's because I could see these guys lining up alt, so I'm like, I need to get out of this immediately and get defense early round. So that was good. I've, I've struggled with that in the past where I've talked for too long in early round and like got out to events too late in situations like this. So I'm glad that that's something that we were able to improve for this. Did that actually happen? Was I right? To be supplemented by the rest of his teammates. Smoke down into mid Adren. He's having none of it. He's going to push through. Yeah, okay. Try and break through these defenses already. Arch control going the way of a Vanguard. Flashbang in. But Esperanto decides best to rob it because there's a smoke in his eyes. Good counter flashes through. They want Moto. They did slow Avangard down. Buys time for the rotation. Now four players from Crazy are good. They're trapped behind Smoke right now. And that Molotov also going to be a problem for Emmy. Takes some damage. Able to fade back. But at least they're positioned properly. Chips is being kind of on the anchor. And everyone else is here to try to put a stop to this attack from Avangard. Guess I'm a little late there because Kicker gets a kill while I'm passing that doesn't get covered, but it also wasn't on screen anyway. And we're watching this program feed that's going to you guys, so. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not that bad, but I probably could have got it back to him maybe a second or two sooner. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Anticipating a fake, and he's gonna be sailing into a save. That was just corny. <laughs> Gets his name ship, sail into a save. You know, trying to have a little bit of banter though. Again, you're gonna miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Some of those are gonna go over well, some of them aren't, but hey, you know, it is what it is. And Vince plays off of what the calm waters comment, so, you know, it's alright. The way that they played Inferno has evolved so much over time. Like, I remember there was a point where they were super slow. Like, you know, just kind of typical CIS team, play the map control style. You know, you have your roles well established, and you just kind of make the mid-round decisions. But then they were starting to go to, like, a more scrappier style when Sanji joined the team, and they were more prone to do the faster pace attacks and things of that nature. Uh, but it felt like this tournament, they kind of reverted back a bit. Like, in that Havu game, they were very slow. They, they almost lost that map, to be honest. It felt like their T-side really lacked that, that kind of oomph to it that, that got you excited. But we've seen very early on in this half, them being willing to pick up the pace a little bit uh, and kind of go for the throats and crazy and try to put themselves in that grand finals position. So I do like that I'm seeing that variance. That's what you want. You want a dynamic T-side. You want to be able to change the pace as the game goes. You want to keep those CTs guessing, and we're already starting to see that come to fruition here very early on in this half. Not bad. Again, kind of letting you know what to expect from this team. 
how they've evolved over time, all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, again, just trying to make light of things, have some fun, make some banter, uh, innocent joking, uh, which is fine. But Vince had no idea what to do with that. <laughs> he just gets back into the cast, which is fair enough. But, uh, you know, it's, it's early, just trying to stay lighthearted, have fun, stay loose. Um, it is not a wishing well, it's a fountain. <laughs> There's cold fish in it, so it's whatever. It's, it's one of those things where just trying to have some fun. You'll either think it's cringy or you'll enjoy it. It is what it is. Maybe that's not too true. I don't know. I should have came in way sooner because I feel like I should have come in sooner here because they're already about to execute and Vince has been going on for a while. He's taken a pause to let me in and now I don't have enough time to really say too much before they're actually going to hit. And so I feel like if I remember this correctly, because I didn't come in sooner, now I'm going to get stuck with this. I think Letney gets like a triple kill spray down on the balcony. Uh, this is maybe the biggest fucking mistake that we made this entire match. And I'm not sure if it's my fault or his fault. Because I'll just play it through and then we'll rewind it. And I'll tell you what I mean. Yeah, this is it. <sighs> that makes me cringe. So... I mean, he should, Vince should have the mic all three of those kills, and he should be, like, making that, like, a big play, because it was. It was a huge moment uh, in, in the beginning of this map. And so I feel like what should have happened is this. Okay, a couple different things could happen here. Either A, I come in sooner for color, and then I get it back to Vince well before they start coming out the apartments and before Letney starts killing anybody. Uh, or B, I literally never say anything this entire round. I just let Vince have the whole round, and I just let him talk. You know, after he takes that pause, yeah, take a pause. That's cool. We want to pause. Uh, sometimes you gotta take a pause. Uh, and then I should have just not picked up. I should have just let him keep going, right? This is where I should have came in. 
if I was going to come in at all, it should have been right here. Because here's a moment where still nothing's really happened yet. I could come in, maybe talk about how they're setting up, you know, that they have some players in the apartments. They're probably going to smoke while off lane. They're probably going to go for this A execute because I knew that's probably what they're going to do is like a lane apartment split. It's exactly what you expect. Anytime that Sanji is not alone in apartments and Adren's actually with him, and I think Adren even goes towards the halls. Um, like, unless a Dream breaks Boiler and goes lane himself, it's it's going to be a lane apartment split with, like, slightly more numbers and apartments than just, like, a typical A hit. So I should have came in right where I paused there a second ago and, and talked about that. I think Vince even tried to let me in right there. Maybe he didn't. He did kind of pick up really quickly. I could have come in, though. I could have, like, motioned, and then he would have stopped right at that word and not pick back up. But we did pick back up, so I should have came in right there. I didn't. Vince keeps going. Could have came in right there, even, and talked about the setup. Now I come in and it's too late. I, I could have even came in sooner on the pause. I feel like I let the pause sit there for too long. So uh, there was like three different times I could have picked up the color here and it would have made a lot more sense than when I did. I came in like way too late. I should have either came in any of those three times I mentioned already that would have been sooner and better or I should have not come in at all. I'm so mad at this. Like I messed this up so much. Or you know what else I could have did? <laughs> I'm sorry, like I'm I'm really mad at, at myself on this one. I should have really just owned the play-by-play -play at this point. I didn't. I like half-assed everything. I should have just went for it on the play-by-play -play and like really made this kill sequence better. Like if I'm gonna fuck up and come in too late, then I probably should have at least really committed to the play-by-play -play and made the play-by-play -play good. But instead, I didn't. Like. I could have just kept going. Like, that was fine, but I should have got these two kills. I just paused. And then Vince does this. I feel like Vince did all that he could to, like, make that good, but the pass there was just so bad. Again, I think this is the biggest error we made the whole game. Maybe I'm getting hung up on it too much, but I need to make sure that I'm picking my timings better. Uh, or if I get stuck in play-by-play, -play, really commit to it. Maybe there's something to be said for Vince, you know, getting out of the situation sooner. That way I would have had more time before this started happening so maybe it's a little bit of him maybe a little bit earlier he should have stopped talking so i had ability to come in but also i think that i could have motioned my way in or i could have just not said anything at all and just let him dominate the round which can happen sometimes and it's fine you don't ever want someone to monologue around too much but if it happens like once or twice not a big deal um so yeah whatever let's just roll it i, I don't want to keep harping on this too much i feel like i've but i feel like this is the, mo the biggest round that we messed up uh the whole whole tournament or this this uh best of three at least Vince should have got out of that faster. Like, I should have been able to talk through freeze time or the rounds already started by the time I start recapping, like, what was most important. But maybe it's because of me talking too long early, just kind of fucked up the timing. So it's like a chain reaction where I came in too late on the color sequence of that push up lane in apartments. And so by the time I got to Vince, he hadn't been talking for that long. So he kind of wants to keep going. And so I think it's just like a chain reaction at that point. He should have stopped. Yeah, that was just a weird situation. I, I came, I come in, I'm coming in way too late here. It, again, it starts that chain reaction of timing. When when you fuck up a pass, it can kind of just keep going for a while, so you can find a, a proper place to reset. Three 
I almost said three on three situation, which clearly is not. <laughs> so that was almost another fuck up, but I kind of saved myself. Sometimes you just got to pause for a second and you'll be able to save yourself because you'll get that extra second to think about what you're about to say and then you can course correct. So it's not natural to say three on three score. It's three to three, but that's because I was about to say three on three situation, I'm assuming. Um, but whatever, not a big deal. <laughs> that pause right there. <laughs> That was wild. It didn't really matter. I got it back to Vince before anything really happened, so not a big deal. Nade on the retreat. Buster's already up close. It's going to be flushed. Up top of Alex. Finds better off the decision to push in. They're taking some more control for themselves. And, and crazy, I've, I've tried to make it up a little bit, Banana, but I feel like they haven't fully committed behind anything. Also curious when we're gonna see a second out from Chips. It feels like once the economy's there, you'll probably see that happen. That's where things might be a little bit different. Definitely seen him be very proficient with that weapon on Banana in previous matches. But right now, it's gonna be just be three CTs. They do have good positioning, though. I mean, it's all about do you check, you know, all your corners. HG being tossed out by Emmy. Tsunami of terrorists. Ebbing its way onto the site, kick up with both entries again. But Chip, that third player, capitalizing. Oh, Letney got so lucky there. That was a good trade sequence for Avangar, and then somehow Letney gets that kill, and it like changes their chances of winning the round. Oh, there was a gap, maybe. Sometimes I can't tell if there's a gap or not. I think there was. Nah, maybe it's just fading. So Jane, one on two. Two separate areas of aggression gonna be coming in from crazy. Otto, up on banana. That flash may have given his position away. And let me still lurking in the shadows of ruins. Now making a move in CT. Otto basically is gonna play fate, but it's not together. It's not cohesive. Jane has every chance to clutch. And he will take it with ease. Good casting on the clutch. Jesus himself, Vince, coming up big here for his team to keep them out in front. That tie not going to linger for too long. It's going to go the way of Avangar here for three. A good initial defense, and they had three players well positioned. It felt like, yeah, they're going to get this, but it was just kind of these quick, rapid exchanges, one for one. And then Jame eventually found himself with the winnable one v two that he does capitalize on. And now crazy, they have very little to work with, Vince. This is where Avangar can really start to steam out in front. Ouch. Rest in peace, Emmy. <laughs> Never stood a chance. All but not forgotten. In fact, we'll be right back in the next round. That's how this works. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, you don't like my Captain Obvious analysis? Oh, that was pretty good. Top, top drool. Yeah. That was a pretty funny exchange. As Francis will get smoked out, anticipating a quick push. Nothing forthcoming. A Vanguard biding their time. Molotov's now going to be forcing out ships into the open. You only had the right idea with the smoke. Business resuming as usual. Actually, the bomb's back at these spawns. So that's a little bit awkward. That's a good funny comment I made about the whole. It's, it's like a round where nothing's really happening. So. Desert Eagle for Esperanto. This would be one of the clutches of the year if he pulled this off. And there's not really much to hold on to, so things will go for it. Still at the backside of the ruins waiting. Goes down, and any small glimmer of hope that Crazy had goes with him. Clean round, not a single point of help lost. Crowd having a lot to cheer for right now. They've had great Counter Strike all day long up until this point, and it seems like it's going to continue that way based on how this half has played out thus far. Very close game on our hands. Not much that crazy could really do in that round. The money wasn't there, but now they'll go into a full buy. Ships won't have the AWP, we'll have the other scope. Don't see the AUG as much as you used to, but still can be effective on some of the longer angles. Sort of. SGs will dominate it, but... Very capable hands of ships as well. Also, can still stay in position to wall back down on Banana. Molotov's not quite deep enough to force him away. 
definitely a different look. You don't see auto op be very often. Very A heavy. They just rely on the second op to get E and shift his hands or something like that if they want to sniper in that position. Good settlement information about tendencies. Hold on. Did I fuck this up? I mean, that was good stuff on information about Sanji, but I feel like I hung on to the mic a little bit too long here and there, like, getting kills and stuff. Luckily, it wasn't, like, a lot of kills going on, so I didn't, like, ruin too much play-by-play, -play, but Vince probably should have been talking about that kill at top move. I mean, I guess that I covered it isn't that big of a deal, but I feel like I also messed up this sentence. Sometimes an apartment's player, but... I said sometimes way too many times in that sequence, so I, fuck, I fucked up my wording a bit here. At least I have good energy with that. But Sanji, a very flexible rifler. Sometimes an apartment's player, but can be that mid entry force as well sometimes. And he comes up with a big kill. I shouldn't have said sometimes twice. Probably should have found a different word. I got it back to Vince at the right time, at least. So I think that all in all, while Vince probably should have been covering that kill top mid, I kind of lost track of what was happening when I was trying to talk about. Um, whatever the fuck was going on the other side of the map i kind of lost track of the mini map and of the mid push um and so i probably should have noticed it sooner and got it to vents before the kill happens here at top mid what was i even saying before let's go back a little bit oh it was the uh auto usually does not be that much and now that means their mids weaker yep 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 See, like, Sanji's already out. Like, I knew that I knew that they were coming mid, and I knew I needed to get the vents, but I didn't realize Sanji was already going to be, like, fucking out. You know what I mean? I think it's because Sanji came out boiler and just swung really wide. I didn't expect him to do that. Yeah, I mean, he's already fucking out. I, I can't... I don't know if I should be too hard on myself here. At least I kept the energy up, and I covered this properly. See, I just said sometimes twice there when I shouldn't have, and so I kind of fucked up my wording. My diction could have been better. Uh, but I didn't add good information that Sanji is indeed normally their apartments player, but this is one of those rounds where he kind of came out boiler, and he kind of did something different, and that's kind of the way that Avangar can change the pace and play a little bit differently. This is like one of the tactics I like to use is like Sanji kind of being more mobile, not just being committed apartments player. So I wanted to bring that insight from when I've watched the demos and seen that, um, and I did, which was good, but I probably could have done it a little bit better. I could have worded what I said better. I could have maybe passed it to Vince sooner. But at least I didn't ruin too much because nothing really happens from this point forward. I get it back to Vince before any real action takes place. So all in all, it's fine. Could have been better. Something to thank God for the future. Uh, I thought this event went pretty well, uh, Clutchmaster, uh, to answer your question in chat. Uh, I, thought, I thought we definitely made some strides in the right direction as far as like loosening up, having more fun, having a bit more banter. Our chemistry is only going to get better over time. This is one of those cases where, I mean, I feel like it is improving. And so, yeah, I think we did a lot of things right. But it's just kind of going through it with a five-tooth comb, really assessing it, kind of going from there. I got it back to him fast enough.
he could just win this round right here, right now. Stanji has to hold down on the plant. And as soon as the plant comes through, oh no, it backfired. Stanji survives on 4 HP. How is that possible? 4 HP, but he now at least has the ability to relocate. Let these know exactly healthy himself. Has no nades, no kicks. This may very well favor Sanji. There's so many angles you're gonna check. Letney, does he have the right call? You better believe he does. But Ships needs the plaudits. His hold was massive on B site. Two seconds. Okay, he's got it. Oh, a little bit concerned for just a bit. It was definitely down to the wire, but he does get it done. And yeah, Ships did do so much work. And that was really dangerous, man, because, you know, he's the only guy B, no one's rotating. Buster sneaks into Archway, so if anyone was gonna rotate, now they're probably gonna get owned. Like, they're probably not gonna Buster to be there. Buster does get a kill top middle as well, so you really start to wonder, like, if it's gonna be a problem where Ships gets pinched, but he did so well to get these two kills, to buy time. Yeah, he did kind of mess up that third spray, but we're gonna give him a pass on that because he put Letney in a winnable 1v1, and Letney took care of business. And so now, we're right back into a close affair. Four to five is going to be the score as we do head into round number 10. Been kind of a marathon here in uh, these semifinals. Our players must be feeling it right about now. Yep, had a three map right here, and then obviously a little earlier today, we also had the three mapper, and all the games have been relatively close if we're honest. Like, I feel like every time it's been double digits from the losing team, except for that one nuke game. MP9 is <laughs> crazy. That's that great potential on the board. Sorry, the reason I'm on my phone is because uh, there's like a weather alert about a potential tornado warning in my area. So I'm trying to make sure that I can even keep doing this or whether or not I need to turn the stream off. Because the storm might uh, get worse here. So that would be a yikes if that were to happen. In fact, yeah, I think I got to cut it here, folks. Um, I know I didn't get to do the whole half. I was trying to do a whole half to just give you some insight on how I review stuff. But unfortunately, uh, weather has not permitted me to do that. I need to, like, get out of the stream now just to make sure that everything's okay because there was, like, a weather alert for my area. Um, but, yeah, there's something that you folks like uh, in the future. I'll try to do, like a full half next time or maybe even a full match if that's something that folks would like to see just give you some you know peel the curtains let you get behind the scenes a bit see how we think about our casting how we review stuff uh what we try to work on you know things of that nature just can give you that little bit of insight i'll put this video up on youtube uh see what you folks think maybe it's something i can do in the future with, with other vods uh not all the time because i'm not always at events and sometimes i want to keep stuff kind of more private between me and vince uh, but every now and then, maybe I'll do something like this to give you that insight. I know Launders has done it sometimes, and it's, it's good content, and, uh, you know, respect it. So, kind of doing it. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll cut it here. I'll put it on YouTube. Thanks so much for checking it out, and catch you next time. Sorry I didn't get to complete this half, but weather is, is kind of an issue right now. So, sorry. Catch you next time.